Hello and welcome to Fish Rap. This week we get some advice on how to catch those lightning fast false albacore. Hear about a contest winning striped bass and sadly say goodbye to a Rhode Island institution. Here goes episode three of the Fish Rap podcast and as always, thanks for listening. Those first schools of albies were seen feeding south of Block Island. Now they're moving inland from the mouth of Narragansett Bay to Watch Hill, bringing a level of excitement equal to spring's first stripers. Captain Rene Latrano of On the Rocks Charters has been finding them on the fly around Newport. Surfcasters have been hauling them in along the south coast, and diehard fisherman Lawrence Thompson keeps giving everyone, including his job, the slip to catch a mess of them for himself from a boat and from the rocks. Dave Hino of Ocean State Tackle recommends metals like the Daddy Mac or Castmaster XLs. Swapping out split rings and hooks on deadly dicks for better catch rates and soft plastic like Joe Bag's Patriot Fish and Al Gag's Whippet Eels. My favorite lures for these fish are hoagie epoxy jigs, he said. They offer durability, long-lasting casting distances, and some buoyancy. They skim along the surface and break water occasionally, he said. Early morning seems to be the best right now and they remain fickle for favorite colors, so bring a bunch and a lunch. It feels like dynamite. You can cast for 20 minutes, slam the rod against the gunnels, curse a blue streak, or swear you hate fishing. You can pack so many jigs and snacks into a plastic box that the lid cracks and cracks again before you finally give up trying to push the damn thing shut. It's a hit like dynamite. You can rig Ted Rods with every color jig, strength of braid, twist of knot, or offerings to Loa. But if albies aren't interested, you better make sure you're comfortable. False albacore are predators fast as summer lightning. Their strike will stop your heart, then spool you the moment you reach for a camera or a paddle. They'll disappear under your boat just when you knew you had them. Worse, they'll school it by the dozens, hundreds even, allowing you to catch and release barely a few. But if you're lucky, and that's all precisely why we love them. As tropically depressing Jose circulated his wind and rain, A few lucky salts joined the Hobie team to try the new Mirage Compass Pedal Drive kayaks on Cape Cod's Craigville Beach. The Barnstable parking lot was already busy in early morning darkness as anglers stretched for rooftop kayaks, stowed rods, and mumbled about a line of long-neglected portajons. Everything was gray except the bright yellows and muted blues of new boats and big soft beach wheels for spiriting them to the shoreline. Craigville curves and gapes to receive the Atlantic, Her bottom splits into equal portions of sand and security for bait and bottom dwellers. Fishermen know this as a reliable striped bass haunt, but for this day, the stripers stayed clear. Despite all that offshore energy, waters were smooth enough through the morning and thankfully full of fish. Scup came to bucktail jigs, bounced even without strips of anything. Black sea bass chased whatever they pleased, and for the wise who packed Rapalas, King Mackerel entertained everyone as they jumped and flew up four feet. I've lived here all my life, and this is the first time I've ever seen them, said one local. There was talk of kings making a surprise arrival around every five or ten years, likely hitching then ditching the Gulf Stream as they more commonly found in the Hatteras area and in that 68 to 75 degree range. Hobie Top Gun Eric Harrison was all over the place, offering guidance, passing out lures, speeding close and far from shore, catching anything with fins from his sleek 16-footer. Sean Barham sitting high in the saddle of his pro angler, seemed to have the right stuff as he landed kings, sea bass, and two of those elusive false albacore. He's a big guy with a big smile and a big boat, surrounded by a tackle store worth of lures, rods, and snacks. He's a top gun as well, and if you followed him around for a while, you'd quickly see why. Albies burst onto the surface in all directions, fast as lightning, disappearing just as magically. They torpedoed through bait balls and right past my rainbow of epoxy jigs. California's Kevin Nakata said there are fish all over the flats, in a nod to just how packed this beach gets when conditions are right. Throwing an epoxy jig toward a fractured brown bait ball, everything stopped fast when my la- line ran down to the arbor knot. I had never respooled the Power Pro Super 8 slick after cutting away so many lengths from foul tips and exploding wind knots on an earlier adventure. That line is a disaster. 
Allure of Last Resort was a three-inch wrinkled blue over silver spoon I found in a parking lot several seasons back. With three rods on board, an Albi predictably hit the one short on line. The beauty of a Mirage pedal drive is that when a big fish tears to the opposite direction, you just reach for a rudder control and start pedaling. I noticed that I didn't notice when I was pedaling, and in just a few seconds the compass was following the Albi while the reel made up precious braid. It's a remarkable tool to have in your, t in your tackle box. There was some muscle memory when your brain tells you to reach for a paddle, but that fades quickly. The fight was a solid five minutes while it dragged me around the bay. Part of the Albi magic is that after trying so hard to catch one, you're transfixed by the fight, by the risk of losing it, by the adrenaline rush of trying to boat such a fighter. Once in the cockpit, it was sweet to see such a magnificent fish blessed with those amazing lines and shades. Nature is nothing short of absolutely fantastic. False albacore can be tough to locate, tough to catch, tough to eat. Even from the beach, <clears throat> albies were landed with surf rods, photographed, and released. One guy did keep one, to which the same local observed, my cat wouldn't even eat that. Locals rule. At day's end, comfortable under a ceiling of dollar bills at the Bayside Resort's Moby Dick Poolside Pub, catches were reviewed, pictures shared, and talk was all about those black dorsal fins tearing across the surface, slicing through a perfect camouflage of gray water and sky. They hit like dynamite indeed, and I'd chase them again from that Hobie kayak in a heartbeat. Ron Rigo won first place in the surf division at the Billy Carr Midnight Madness Striper Shootout. Fishing from the beach was tough, but he managed a 27.9 pound striper, while Rich Reich took second place with a 26.02 bass. Oddly, those were the only two surf fish from 20 registered fishermen. Kyle Dawson earned first place in the boat division of 52 fishermen with a sweet 49.88 pound striper, while Billy Carr's own nephew won the junior division. With a party at the Bond View afterwards, $4,000 was raised for the Point Judith Fisherman's Foundation Scholarship Fund. Well done all around. Over the years, this column has offered far too many obituaries leaving words for fishermen lost to water, age, and unknowns. Characters all, all filled a place in our hearts with stories, laughs, and tears. This week we mourn another loss. Benny's, the iconic go-to family store for licenses and light bulbs, totes and towels, games for the yard, patio, kids, and grown-ups who still walk the toy aisle to get to the cleaning supplies, gas grills and sponges for a dollar. Benny's is closing for good. What kid didn't pace the bicycles, dreaming of pink handlebar tassels or slick chrome wheels for hot riding side roads and hot summer driveways? Too often minimized by late summer piles of plastic and Halloween creepiness, then October's imitation Christmas window snow, the fishing aisle was the place for surf plugs, sunblock, reels, rods, mono, braid, nets, waders, weedless hooks, and bilge pumps secured behind plexiglass doors with the key still dangling from the lock. Who can forget those lower pegs, heavy with vacuum-packed minnows and sand lances, their poor eyes bulging from the pressures of plastic? The surest sign of spring, Al's goldfish trout lures hung from pegs above floors wet from snow boots. The closing was a surprise to, for Al's, so until another retailer tries to fill Benny's big galoshes, you can find their lures for sweet water and salt at their website, www.alsgoldfish.com. I'll miss the sting of Paul Mall waves wafting out from behind compost and topsoil, welcoming me to a foyer of green plastic turtle sandboxes, t-shirts fading on blue plastic hangers, and big dusty bags of charcoal. I'll miss all those fun beach toys, end cap temptation of snicker bars bigger than any one person should ever attempt, shells of Patriot's car accessories, and tires permanently on sale. Most of all, I'll miss knowing that once through the doors, the fishing aisle was dead ahead. Rest in peace, Bennies. It was a good run. <laughs>